speak, give a testimony about a, a concrete project we did uh, just a few days ago, concluded a few days ago, in the Balkans, about healing the path. Oh. Hello? Okay. So, some concrete uh, project. But first, a short video. So you can see what I'm, I will going to, I'm going to talk about. Hello everyone, we just completed the launching of the Peace Road Balkans 2018 here in Pristina, City Hall with the Mayor, and it was an amazing event. The Mayor gave wonderful uh, words and addressed the participants. Uh, before coming here to Pristina, we were in Mekaya City, the whole city were mobilized, the mayor, and, uh, artistic groups and dancers welcomed the uh, bikers, peace road bikers, who came from home way from uh, Montenegro, where very early morning we had a wonderful event with the city mayor in the cultural center here, there with uh, over 400 people, and it has been a wonderful experience so far. So in three days we already had six events and it's uh, going to be more exciting tomorrow in uh, Macedonia, next day in uh, Serbia, finally in Sarajevo. And we look forward to this event and we'll keep you informed. Thank you. It's been a fantastic morning. I was so pleased with the welcome in the Parliament of Albania. Uh, really a warm welcome from the MPs and it was good to see our old friend Albert Boyce here, the President. And uh, it was nice to be greeted by the city of Tirana as well. I love the singing and the dancing. It was good to get back on the bike and uh, ride with everyone through this beautiful city of Tirana. And now uh, we're off on the Balkan Peace Road, more than a thousand kilometers, and uh, visiting six or seven countries. I really can't wait. I think this is such a wonderful project. And uh, all over the world, inspired by our true mother, people are riding for peace. Thank you. We're so happy that we just started launching here the Peace Road in Balkan, in Albania Parliament. It was a really great event and many young people participated, so we believe this would be a good sign and uh, uh, for this project that we are going to do to Balkan and join us. Thank you. So, I'm here in Montenegro with Peace Road and we want to make peace through bikes. So, come with us, join with us. Thank you. Okay. Bellissimo project, a okay. beautiful project that we just concluded, as I said. Just a moment, I, I open also the presentation. Hopefully I can do it with this computer. Okay, good. And, uh, Okay, um, why in the Balkans? I'm going to explain why we went to the Balkans. We were just with a big bus, uh, 15 young people from all over Europe, somebody, one, two girls, one from Korea, the other from Japan even, with the bikes. And we went city by city in seven different countries, where the, we started from the parliament in Tirana, and then uh, city by city, the city mayor, together with the city council, welcome us, organize a stage in which we had uh, musical performances and so on. And together with the bikers from the local city, sometimes we had 100 bike, bicycles there. We went around and gave testimony about our desire for peace and new beginning. Why in the Balkans? I will go shortly to give uh, a look to the story. I was in Sarajevo because the uh, project concluded, was concluded in Sarajevo. Uh, the, the picture is not so clear, but this is the, the, the board that was put in a wall where the First World War actually started. In a sense that they were killed, uh, 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 the, the heir to the throne of Austria was killed in that, exactly in that place. I was there. This is a picture that I took myself. And then this is the Gavrilo Princip arrested after he killed this uh, Archduke Ferdinand there, that was supposed to become the new king of Austria. This is, was the, I mean, not the, the, the uh, main reason why the war started, but started, this was kind of a, the, the spark yeah. that started all the process. 
So, uh, on June 28, 14, Archduke Franz Ferdinand, heir to the Austro-Hungarian Empire, visited the Bosnian capital, the Bosnian capital, Sarajevo. A group of six assassins, supplied by the Serbian Black Hand, gathered on the street, where the Archduke motorcade would pass, with the intention of assassinating him. Kabrinovic threw one of the six, threw a grenade at the car, but missed. Some nearby were injured by the blast, but Ferdinand's convoy carried on. The other assassins failed to act as the cars drove past them. So all six failed. But what happened? Sometimes, you know, destiny. I believe that something should happen and must happen in some way. About one hour later, when Ferdinand was returning from a visit at the Sarajevo hospital with those in, who wounded in the assassination attempt, the convoy took a wrong turn into a street where, by coincidence, Princip stood, one of the six assassins was still there, with the pistol, Princip shot and killed Ferdinand and his wife, Sophie. <coughs> and then, after that, the consequences. Austro-Hungarian authorities in Bosnia and Herzegovina imprisoned and extradicted approximately 5,500 prominent Serbs, 700 to 2,200 of whom died in prison. There was a retaliation. Re 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 a further 460 Serbs were sentenced to death. A predominantly Bosniak special militia known as the Schutz Corps was established and carried out the persecution of Serbs. On 23rd July, Austria-Hungary delivered to Serbia the July ultimatum, a series of 10 demands that were made intentional and unacceptable in an effort to provoke a war with Serbia. Serbia decreed the general mobilization on the 25th. Serbia accepted all of the terms of the ultimatum, except for Article 6, which demanded that the Austrian delegates be allowed in Serbia for the purpose of participating in investigation into the assassination. Following this, Austria broke off diplomatic relations with <coughs> Serbia, and the next day ordered a partial mobilization. Finally, on Ju July 28, 1914, a month after the assassination, Austria-Hungary declared war on Serbia, and this was the beginning. Actually, now I know among you there are also Austrians and so on. We have to, you know, all, all Europe is involved emotionally with the Balkans. All Europe, sometime in history, had something to do with the Balkans. So we say geographically the Balkans are not the heart of Europe. But from the point of view of pain, wars, conflict, front line, Balkans are, are at the heart of Europe. That's why it's so important. Peace is important. It involves the history of Germany, Austria, Italy, all countries, even Great Britain is involved. For a while was involved. And uh, there were many wars in Balkans, starting from the Ottoman Empire, from, from Turkish at the time. There were three, we say, Balkan wars, two very well known, the last one very recent. So the First World War, also known as the First World War of the Great War, was a global war originating in Europe that lasted from 28 July 1914 to 11 November 1918. It led to the mobilization of more than 70 million soldiers, including 60 million Europeans, making one of the largest wars in history. An estimated 9 million combatants and 7 million civilians died. We should know why we are here today. What does it mean? Uh, celebrating the end of the First World War. Military losses were exacerbated by the new technological industrial development and the tactical stalemate caused by grueling trench warfare, machine guns and nerving gas, uh, chemical gas. You have to remember, the First World War was the first war in which we had the mass destruction weapons. The machine gun killed, because before there were no machine guns. But what happened, they started to the war in a, in a classical way, in a way they were used to do before. But they were killed a thousand and thousand just by one machine gun. You can imagine. And then chemical gas thrown into the trenches where the people were, soldiers were there and they were horrible killed, horribly killed. Unresolved rivalries at the end of the conflict contributed to the start of the Second World War about 20 years later. We need to know also that the Second World War <coughs> happened because we could not solve the problem of the First World War. Something very long to discuss eventually, to this we need another conference, but we should now go ahead. So, Italy, Italy at the beginning was ne neutral, didn't want to participate in the First World War, but then there were huge mobilizations, this is Bologna. People went on the street claiming they wanted to go to the, to the war. Why? 
because Italy wanted to conclude the, the, the Risorgimento trial. They, wanted, they were, were claiming some land that according to them, Italians, we claimed that that land belonged to us and still were under Austrian. So we took the chance, you know. That's what, but all Europe finally, but for some reason, always for national interest. All the consequences were undermined. Nobody imagined what would happen. Everybody thought this war is going to finish in a few months. They completely never expected that the war could last so much and with so many people dying, including Italians, of course. Villa Giusti is the place where we, where, that we are going to visit. This is the place where the war, the prof, peace process started. Of course, we know that it was concluded in Versailles in France, but started the year where the Italy and Austria signed the Treaty of Peace, the Villa Giusti. This is the room that today we will see where the, the November 3rd, 1918, the, the, the treaty was signed by Italian and Austrians. So let's speak about, you guys, okay. Now, more recently, this is very important too, I have one slide about this, with the called the Yugoslav Wars, or the, somebody called the Third Balkan Wars, so after, after, after the Turkish one. The Yugoslav Wars were a series of ethnic conflicts, wars of independence and insurgencies fought from 1991 in the former Yugoslavia, which led to the breakup of the Yugoslav state, which is with, with, with its constituent republics declaring independence despite tensions between ethnic minorities in the new countries. Uh, Serbs, Croats, Muslims being unresolved. Often described as Europe's deadliest conflict since World War II, the wars were marked by many war crimes, including ethnic cleansing, crimes against humanity and rape. The Bosnian genocide was the first European crime since World War II to be formally judged as genocidal in character and many key individual participants were subsequently charged with war crimes. According to the International Center for Transitional Justice, the Yugoslav Wars resulted in the deaths of 140,000 people. It is estimated that the wars in Croatia, Bosnia, and Herzegovina and Kosovo produced about 2.4 million refugees and an additional 2 million internally displaced persons. It was a tragedy. I want to add to this, more than 50,000 women raped systematically. Systematic, not because it happened. Not because some crazy guy uh, thought had the desire, or what, but because this was the system to destroy internally the ethnic group. And we are talking about women today. This is some picture from the, from the war, anyway. We don't need to comment that, but that was in Sarajevo. Sarajevo went through almost four years of siege from both. A day, 250,000 bombs were thrown in this almost four years. In Sarajevo, inside Sarajevo. Now they are rebuilding the city, but an enormous suffering was the, the, the situation, always. All, Bal all history of Balkans is marked by incredible, incredible suffering. And they are the heart of Europe. These are our, our brothers, let's say. Uh, that's why I'm, I'm, I'm happy today. I feel representing more the Balkans. I'm, at this moment, don't look at me as Italian, because I connected to them very much. I'm working there with the many, uh, from parliamentarian to any, any person. So, what is the purpose of this project, please? But I want to read a little bit of this uh, leaflet. Of course, you cannot read from there. Project purpose. Peace Road Balkans aim to contribute to ending the prejudices among Balkan countries such as ethnical, religious, and cultural prejudices are still there. For example, one example, clear example. We were in the bus with uh, these uh, young people. Some ambassador for peace was with us some uh, for parliamentarians, some people. And with the bus we went to the, with the border, to the border of Serbia. But the Kosovo young people were not, al were not allowed to enter Serbia. So they had to go back to Kosovo. And I heard the testimony of one Serbian girl. She is president of young youth organization. She said, we young people are tired to, have the, to receive this inheritance of hatred. We want to see other young people freely in their eyes. We don't want to be involved in this stuff, in this war mind. We don't want to have, we want to learn peace and we want to go wherever we want 
and see other young people as we are. We are similar. So this is the spirit of young people, but still need to work on that. That's why it's so needed. This kind of project are so needed through sport, bike, and soccer, whatever. It aims to establish new lasting relationships among young people and give them the message of mutual prosperity and development for the sake of each country and Balkans as a whole. I gave a few speeches during the tour, like uh, Dr. Balkan, uh, that is president of UPF uh, in Europe, and uh, Jack Corley, also uh, responsible for UPF in the East. The content was, you know, in the Balkans, there are beautiful, bright young people. If you are not, you will never tell you, you don't know that. There are beautiful young people that study, get a degree, they play soccer wonderfully. I saw a soccer game there, I was astonished. They are so good, you know, in Bosnia, I saw that. And then they play songs, they sing very well. They are the best young people you can imagine. They are quite pure also, compared to Western countries in some way, average. Eh? And then my, what I said, what I asked to, uh, to the politicians there, religious leader even, I said, do you want to see these beautiful children that are here, again with the guns in their hands? You want to see them still shooting to, with each other? Or you want to see playing soccer, becoming doctors, becoming engineers? This depends on us. Our generation still is in charge, unfortunately, I have to say. We had to change things for the sake of young generations. And then involve, involve international young people and VIPs in order to give the message of cooperation and gain the trust and support of the international community. Bring the international community there. Involve political and religious leaders to work and cooperate together for the sake of peace and development of the Balkans. Involve national and international media in order to promote the beautiful nature and rich cultural variety of the Balkans. This is what we did and we will do, continue to do. We are planning next year to go with two, three buses, with the musical groups, more young people. And we want to shake the Balkans and make them brothers and sisters there, where they had to end up these rivalries and fight with each other because they are, you can imagine, these countries are underdeveloped economically, generally speaking. Some countries are a little bit ahead, some countries behind. But why they are like this? Why are they still in this state? Because they fight with each other. You know how difficult it is to pass from the border of Macedonia to Montenegro, from Macedonia to Serbia, to Montenegro to Serbia, to it's so the one hour, more, one hour and a half, every border we had to pass for controlling, opening the trunk. They don't trust each other. If they could unite, if they could cooperate economically, if they could cooperate, create the project, cultural projects, they could prosper so much because they have capabilities, they have resources, they have everything. This is just one example of what we can do in the world. These are the countries we were to use our way. But we are doing this world, uh, this old organization, municipalities, Albanian parliament, you know, all the, the, the ones that contributed to this tool, also Women Federation, you can see that together with the youth organizations and so on. This project of uh, Peace Road, we are carrying on everywhere, even in Padova, we had the march some time, some, some time ago. In Padova in Padova, we should do this kind of projects in order to show the people that there is hope. People need hope nowadays, because they switch on TV, they watch, they watch TV news, they lose hope. It's good to be informed, but be informed, if being informed means losing hope is no good, better to throw away the TV. <laughs> because without hope, we are dead. You know, we need to look at the future with the vision and hope. Not only for us, I, I'm not too young anymore, as you can see, but I want to feel still young because I want to give hope to the others. So I encourage you really to, to contribute, to participate, maybe in the next Balkan Peace Road or whatever. Organize Peace Road in your own city. You can do, because we don't have people with the guns, and in Italy we have also people with the guns, sorry, but in some part of Italy still young people with the guns, unfortunately. But generally speaking, our problems are different. But we are not in peace because of drug, because of family breakdown, 
because of political conflict, because economical situation. We have five million people in Italy under the level of poverty. This is a war, war on poverty, not a war with guns, but it's a war that must be conducted with peaceful means. Men and women together, uniting with the family spirit and creating a new culture in which we can prosper together. Because the key is conflict or cooperation. This makes the difference. Everywhere in the world, if we will be able to create a politics, economics of cooperation, we will prosper. If we do the death, we will go down and down and down and down. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you.